Awesome, we are now live, Mark. We're ready to rock. Hello, um, how are you all going? Good, good. I'm going to find us in the group and pin us to the top and tag. Poor Mark had some technical difficulties, and I think they're my fault because he's been plain sailing, flying solo in his coaching calls until we're back together. So I think I must be your your person. Usually unlucky charm. <laughs> you're, you're bad and um, you're bad luck bad charm. <laughs> Brilliant. So, guys, that is us connected now. We are, well, I am <laughs> Laura Hutchinson. I'm the head trainer at The Sculpted Vegan. If you've not met me already, and we've got Mark Getty, our Irish Hulk, pro bodybuilder, Mr. World. Mark, how many competitions have you competed in? I would say we're probably touching 60 or more now. So, roughly the last 27 years and probably averaging at least sometimes three or four a year but generally one or two so i think if you count it up over the time you're probably sitting in the 50s or 60s at this stage too many yeah. too, too many, many. <laughs> absolutely madness for myself i competed a, a humble five times and that was me ready to <laughs> hang up I my big call it quits after five to be honest and i might be a little <laughs> bit further forward than i am now absolutely but mark is kim's prep coach my prep coach um trainer within our company we're very very lucky to have mark aboard because what mark does not know about bodybuilding is not worth knowing so we are here tonight for you guys to get to know us a little bit better we're literally going to take any questions you can just ask us anything just fire them in the comments at the side um mark i'll give you a little bit of background of what's, what's been happening this week in the group um, Kim took the members through trying to really find out um, what their why is on Monday. And today we've been then looking at what their why not is. Now, it has been a little bit of a, we've, we've kind of had to help everybody dig a little bit deeper into their whys. And they're quite lofty, quite grand, just like best self, you know, best me. Um, world peace came up with sometimes. We're just like, World peace, not nice ass. Let, let's really narrow it down here. What we it's maybe just a about. slight difference in opinions there. Like, you know, if you come up uh, with a handle on world peace in four weeks, you'll be a billionaire outright, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. So, like, Mark, from your experience, like, how, you've done 50 to, to 60 shows. I, I love that you actually can't remember specifically no. how many. I think I stopped know. counting after about 20 or 30 because I realized it was getting old. You know what I mean? That's it. And the more numbers you put to it and you started doing the maths, you started going, Jesus, is it that long? <laughs> Yeah. Are you ready? But you know, to to achieve so much in in your life, and then even if you're athletes and stuff, which you train now, over like hundreds of top three placings, world champions, British champions. You know, how important is it to have a really strong and clear why when you're chasing your goals? Massively important. It's the first thing you sort of need to get in touch. Like whenever anybody, if I decide to do a show, or one of the athletes decide to do a show, or somebody just comes to you at the start you need to know the reason and behind it you need to know what their goals are what their motivating factors are and everybody's different you know what sort of will make one person tick will have nothing for anybody else like you know years and years ago a couple of mates of mine you mind used to laugh that uh you know the sort of motivation to get into shape i was never one of these guys that wanted to diet down for a holiday i didn't care do you know what i mean i went to wherever it was going nice and fat and happy and ate what i was going to do and drank and blah 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 and even from the wedding, it was the same principle. I think I'd done a show before the wedding and the guy that was designing the suits basically told me to stop eating after because they were taken in and taken out that many times. I think he was getting fed up. But for me, the one thing that always motivated me to get into shape was a show. So you put me on a stage, that was the only motivation I ever got. So anything else, I didn't care about getting into shape. But doing a show, I always turned up in the best shape I could be in. And, you know, sometimes it was good enough and other times it wasn't. But at the end of the day, that was my motivating factor. So finding out what makes someone tick and finding out what motivates them is so, so important. Because like I said, if you had said to me, right, Mark, we're going to do 16 weeks here to go to Ibiza. I want you in the shape of your life. I'd be like, it's not happening. I'll do 16 days and I won't be in shape. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to happen. So, you know, what motivates me will be different from person to person. So finding out what sort of motivates you and then setting out clear goals. What I find more so now with people getting ready for shows and other things is uh, a lot of the time now, uh, people want to compete a lot more often. So the long-term goals are very much harder to set. A lot of people can't see past, you know, four, six, eight weeks. So setting them long-term goals like the off-season or building muscle or things like that seem to be a lot harder now to do than they were 15 or 20 years ago, where most people now 
are setting goals easier four to six to eight weeks. So it's a complete change. Um, even prepping people now, you're sort of setting a lot more easier and, and shorter term goals for people to get in shape. And that seems to work a lot better where years ago, you could have said, right, for this year, we're going to do this. Now you say to some prep athlete, for this year, I want you to do this. You're looking at you going, can I compete in four weeks? You know what I mean? You're going, are you, are you serious again? So it's a lot different. So like I say, the, the grounds have changed. Uh, people's mindsets have changed. And just finding out what makes that person tick, what makes them motivate, and what is their goals that's going to help achieve them is massively important in the start off, you know? Absolutely. And Kim's live earlier, and um, she said, uh, a goal without a plan is just a dream. And I was like, yeah. oh, I have to write that down, because it is so it's, true, you know. It is, see- you know. We have spoken Laura more times than enough in the EBM and different things. And you know me, it's all plan, plan, plan. Everything needs to be structured, routine, planned. If you, you know, prepare, feel to prepare, uh, prepare to feel. It's as simple as that. Do you know what I mean? And planning is so, so important. You know, once you've, once you've got them goals, you need a pathway of how you're going to achieve them goals. You know, turning around and saying, I want to make a physique in 12 weeks. You may as well just turn around and, and do it blind because once you decide what your goal is and your time frame, you now need a reason or, or, or a way to do that and make it happen. So they're all important. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, pick the goal, pick the time frame, make it realistic, and then put the plan in action in order to achieve it. You know, absolutely. And um, so, guys, once again, just in case you've just hopped on, I'm head trainer Laura of the Sculpted Vegan, and we've got Mark Getty, our top bodybuilder pro here. So you can ask us any questions tonight it's no hold barn what no you can ask barn. us it's no hold barn what we'll say be prepared for quite a lot of swearing so we can go hide any children if you feel that you need to but we're just gonna let it all um come out tonight you know anything um health fitness at all just throw it at us and um, some questions have come through which i am going to dive in here I've actually got them up on my phone so mark Abby Cajero Escalante has asked, what is the best thing to eat, drink before and after a workout? Because everyone everyone gives different ideas, but I would like to know from you experts. It is it, it can be different now. That's one thing I was going to say. For me personally, if I told you what I eat before leg day, I don't want you all running out and doing it because it may or may not work, you know. But um, usually my sort of way of doing things is I like eating far away from a workout. What I found, if I eat too close to my workout, it ends up, uh, I end up, one of the machines ends up wearing what I've been eating, or I end up in the toilet with it coming out one or the other end. So it's not really a good luck for training. That is the God's honest truth. Now, as I get older, you find that it happens a bit more frequently. So the rule of thumb for me really is, I, at the minute where I'm sort of dieting down, um, I'm eating a bowl of oats with a wee bit of fruit, and then I have a basically, uh, a bit of egg whites and a protein or a scoop of protein. And that's usually about, say, half one, and I'll train about half three. So it's two hours before, you know. I like the food well digested. I like to feel empty in the stomach when I train because I don't like any discomfort or any bloat. Um, as far as post-workouts, I don't do any intro workouts I never like any intro workouts Again, that's just choice. I find if I start taking intro workout stuff, it ends up lying in my stomach. So I'll take a pre-workout maybe 15 minutes before training, and that'll contain a blend of branch chains, essential aminos, creatine, glutamine, maybe some sort of stimulated pre-workout, depending on how I'm feeling, just all mixed in, and we'll take that 15 minutes before the training session. That doesn't seem to bloat me too much. And then obviously during the training session, depending on where I'm at on a comp or a prep, I'll either take some form of sugary drink or just plain old water, you know. After I finish uh, a session, I like to take... Uh, 60 to 80 grams of protein and then about 100 to 150 grams of a fast acting carb. The one I'm taking at the minute is uh, it's dextrose and waxy maize, but the one I was taking for a long period of time was Vitargo. The only reason I've stopped taking Vitargo is because Lee ordered the wrong stuff off uh, the website and it came in 10 kilos. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just use it. And that's why I'm using that at the minute. I have to say, I actually like the taste of it. Uh, Vitargo, I found I didn't want to mix it with my protein because my protein was maybe strawberry and Vitargo was orange. So I was drinking a protein shake, drinking Vitargo, where this here is strawberry, so you can mix it and it's just one shake and it just seems that wee bit easier. So a mistake and it's actually led the decent you. So that's my sort of routine uh, pre and post workout. A lot of people have different sort of degrees about what they do, but for me, two hours before works perfect. 15 minutes a wee pre workout. And then as soon as I lift, let, let the weight down, I make up my shake and I go straight back into it, you know? 
Mm, absolutely. Um, just to add, Mark isn't a vegan, so he'll be giving advice of his things. Um, for me, I would use protein shakes a lot. Again, Mark, normally what Mark's told me to have, and I've used Vitargo myself as well in the past. It's really, really good when we're on a build. Um, with caffeine or a pre-workout, I'm not from yeah. fancy it's espresso. Hit me up with espressos. You like Mark, the old school. Have coffee, which just blows my mind absolutely at all. Never. But I can survive the fight. It's strange because for the for the size I am, when I take some of these pre-workout scoops, you hear guys taking two and three scoops. I can take about a quarter of a scoop or half a scoop. And if I take any more, I'm literally off my head. I nearly think I go out for a night out. So I am uh-huh. very sensitive to stimulants and caffeine and all because I never, ever drink coffee, never have done, never will. I don't take any energy drinks and things like that. So my tolerance for stimulants and caffeine is very very low so i try to i err in the side of caution when i'm taking anything with a stimulated effect pre-training because they end up running about the gym like a madman if there's too much in it you know not a good luck for the other members of the gym yeah i find that so funny somebody's asked is it is it cargo vitargo i believe it's v-i-t-a-r-g-o and yeah. um, potentially struggling with the the northern irish accents <laughs> of a kid cargo. That <laughs> by the end so let's keep firing for the questions that are coming in thick and fast now which is awesome now i am noticing some questions are coming in very specific to peak week of extreme body makeover and um, you guys are going to have me tomorrow in um in that group taking the live there so i'm not going to be answering any questions specific to ebm and peak week if you feel you need the answer before tomorrow night 7 p.m uk 2 p.m eastern just post and ask it in the group and myself or one of the coaches or another member will help you there so ebm let's keep them very specific and um, a little bit more generic advice here um so mark next one um liz is liz goodall is asking from a workout point of view, is it possible to get rid of this delightful apron you get left with after having a C-section? Now, Mark, true or false, you know, can you can you spot reduced fat? Not really, no. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, fat sort of goes away throughout the whole body evenly. You know what I mean? What I've found of prepping athletes over the past 20, 25 years, women especially, is the lower body is always the last to go. Men sort of will be in condition in certain places way before women will. And it's only in the last maybe three or four weeks that you start to see development in the glutes, hamstrings, quads, and even around the lower part of the abs. It's just basically where most people hold the sort of extra weight. And it seems to be woman it's from the waist down, you know. It will all go, but the best way to get it anywhere is to get leaner all over the body, you know. And the thing about it is what people don't understand is they say, oh, my stomach's not coming in, my stomach's not coming in. Your stomach is coming in. It's just one of the last places to come in. And basically, in a nutshell, when you lean in certain, when you're lean everywhere else, like the way I've always sort of said it in analogy, if you think about having 10 mil of fat on your arms and 100 mil of fat on your stomach, once you burn 10 mil throughout the body, you have no fat in your arms, but you've still 90 mil in your stomach. So it doesn't look like your stomach's actually shifted, but it has still reduced at the same, same sort of speed as your arms and things. So it does come off, it will come off. It just takes that wee bit more time. Do you know what I mean? So things after C-sections, pouches and things like that, they will shift. You just have to get that bit, bit leaner all over in order for it to sort of look that wee bit better, you know. But like I say, just stick to it. Don't be disheartened with, you know, your arms being leaner, your legs being leaner, and your stomach still get a wee bit left. It will come off. Just keep going. Absolutely. Um, we've nearly answered. Barbara Stollock, you had asked, what is the best way to lose belly fat? I believe off that one. And Marcus just answered it. It is going to be to lose <laughs> body fat over and actually also in the long term it's going to be to build muscle to really um build the metabolism to help with burning fat as well and one thing i find i can see with a lot of women that come into our programs we get a lot of people who've been yo-yo dieters in the past so again they've had this body goal you know they want to lose the pouch after c-section or whatever else and you know they've they've just sort of done it again both out that plan i know we keep coming back to the plan aspect in the things that kim's talking about having the real goals in the plan and we're going to talk a lot about the importance of a plan on this i would believe in most of our answers because that's what kind of comes back to but when it comes to losing body fat it is having that plan of the calorie deficit of increasing your movement with your cardio and your strength training and here at the Sculpted Vegan, that's what we're experts in, burning fat, building muscle, and really creating those plans that lay everything out for you. Anything else to add with that, Mark? 
I think the big thing, the big problem with most people, and I'm going to, you know, it's not just women, it's fellas as well, but I think a lot of time the stereotype has been eat less, do more cardio, and this is the best way to burn fat, but it's actually not. You know what I mean? If, if nowadays if you go into proven research in any sort of facility, it will say that the best way to burn fat is actually by lifting weights. Now, not the fact that it burns off more calories or anything else, but as Laura touched on, the heavier you lift, the more muscle you build, the quicker your metabolism goes, the more food you can eat, the more body fat you can burn off. So it actually works in a tangent. So we all call it the three-pronged approach. Your diet's good, your training's good, and your cardio is good. And as long as you're factoring in and hitting all three goals or hitting all three principles, you'll lose a hell of a lot more fat than you will do with just using cardio and diet alone. The problem with people doing cardio and diet alone is they end up just getting into a rat race where it's going round and round and round in circles. You know what I mean? Because you're doing too much cardio, you're eating too little food, and then your body doesn't want to shift anymore. So you end up getting yourself in a rut, a plateau, and then you end up falling off the wagon. So like I say, using the weights into that encourages your body to eat more, which encourages your body to build more, which, believe it or not, encourages your body to burn more. So you know what I mean? Keep everything in and it'll work a hell of a lot better than just using one or two on its own. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing as well with, with bodybuilders, you know, and with, with any of our programs, we, we always have a start date and an end date. So again, it's not that I'm just going to do this thing for a couple of weeks and see what happens. It's like we start on this date, we finish on this date, whether it's our four week programs, eight week, 12 weeks. Mark just prepped me for um, a photo shoot, which was on the 7th of July. And I had start date, 12 weeks out, end date was Friday the 7th of July. And when you've got that map, when you've got that plan, and Mark was, you know, prepping me with my calorie drops, with my cardio and all the kind of um, changes with it to cause my loss of body fat, you know, it just is that much easier to keep going as well because when you know like the end is in sight you can keep going towards it so it's just so super important to have those specifics to help with the fat loss to get in get the job done get out you've got that body transformation boom bash done absolutely also if you put an end it you have to be ready like i can't ring the show promoter and say listen how do we have a sticking point here about a few bags of crisp any chance you can push that show back four weeks do you know what i mean you have to be ready for that and the only way you're going to be ready for that specific date is if everything runs well. So you have to be planned. Like I have to know, the way I work out shows is simple. Do you know what I mean? I work out roughly how much fat I've got to lose. Now I don't do anything specific. I don't take DEXA scans. I literally know by looking at myself roughly to the pound how much weight I've got to lose. So say for argument's sake, there's 40 pound and I want to aim two to three pound a week. I give myself 20 weeks in order to lose that. So there is a method to the, the amount of time that I would do dieting for a show. But if I feel that things are running a wee bit behind, you speed things up. If I feel that things are running too far ahead, you slow things down. But as long as you give yourself enough time and you're working to a date, you're always going to be more inclined to stick to things because you know as the weeks turn on and on, that date's getting closer and closer. And for me, you're standing up there with the best in the world. You don't want to come in looking shit. Otherwise, you're going to be laughed at. So for me, that was why it was always motivating. For me, once I decided, right, I'm doing a bodybuilding show and I'm doing it on this certain date, it was shit or bust. You can't turn around and pull out. You can't turn around and tell the organizer you're not ready and can you move it four weeks. You have to be ready on that date. So, you know, it kept me focused. It kept me motivated. And it meant you didn't really deviate off the plan at all. So if I had to just turn around and go, right, I'll do 12-week diet and I'll do it up in November, December and see how things go. On October, I'll be sitting eating shade again. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> we go in there, I'll just push it out to January and January will become March and March will become June and who wants to go on holiday lean anyway? I'll do it next year. And that's the way it goes. Everybody's the same. I'm the same as everybody else. If I don't have something to focus on, I ain't doing it either. You know? Absolutely. Now I'm seeing some questions coming in here thick and fast about intermittent fasting. Mark, has that been any way involved in the key to your success and your amazing physique at all oh, over the years? Definitely not. No. No. <laughs> Even want to talk about it for like a year. See, at the end of the day, right? See all these fucking fad things that have come out in the last few years. Do you know what I mean? They're just literally ways to create a fashionable way of getting into shape. That's all it boils down to, you know? Intermittent fasting, all it is in a nutshell is if you ever are up 16 hours of the day and you don't eat for eight hours, you can do less damage in eight hours. That's all it is, right? My problem with intermittent fasting, if you didn't feed me for eight hours, if I didn't get fed for eight hours, I'm going to be one grumpy shit. So everybody around me, is going to get it and there's a more than likely a chance that the next eight hours i'll pile double the food in just to compensate yeah, you start me for eight hours. you know what i mean so i don't think it's luck at the end of the day it boils down to 
you know, a wee bit of mindset and a wee bit of discipline and things like that when it comes to eating. But for me, balance is always the key. You know what I mean? Balanced diet, good macro profile, good nutritious food that keeps you fuller for longer, you know, not eating any crap really and, uh, you know, doing your cardio and training. But in reality, intermittent fasting for me, I, I wouldn't even say it's good for people that have issues eating because it does create other issues. Do you know what I mean? Like you get up out of bed and you're not allowed to eat to four o'clock. Jesus Christ, I don't know what I'd be doing between the hours of 12 and 4. Like, do you know what I mean? Personally, I don't think there's any need. But like I say, the, the whole thing about it is, is it, it sort of shortens the period of time you're eating. But a lot of people I know have tried it and it hasn't worked for them simply because they're just getting so weak in the mornings. And especially if you're training and doing cardio in the mornings, you know, you're basically doing on an empty stomach. You've no fuel coming in after the workout. You're waiting an hour, four or five hours before you're eating. You know, it's just a fancy way of cutting down the calories per day. But if you're sort of doing it right, your mind's in the right place, you're focused, your goals are set, you should be able to do that anyway without having to just basically tell yourself what time you're going to eat and what time you're going to finish eating, you know? Yeah, let's dig into that because I, I know, well, I know for myself, I train a few twice a week at 8.45 and like, and it's legs of Mark and legs of Mark, like you're ready to die after. Like you, you're, you're kind of warming me back up after after my break and getting back into the swing of it. But like Kim came into the office today and she was pretty much like staggering about the place and nearly had to have like a lie down. I just can't personally imagine at 8.45 not having food in my system. Yeah. Fill my sessions or after like I know you train again, especially Saturdays. If you're in before you go to football with the kids, etc., like 9:30, 9:45. Like, could you push those weights that you have with no food or fuel? Not a chance. Not a chance. At the end of the day, right? I need something. Like you know, you're training. Anybody that's seen my leg day videos, you can see the weight you're moving. If you're not eating, my problem with leg day is it takes so much out of me. I can have a meal, as I say, a couple hours an hour before legs, then a train legs, but I have to eat literally whenever I finish legs. And the thing about it is I do legs on a Saturday. And the reason I do legs on a Saturday is even when I come up to a show, Saturday is sort of my high calorie day. So just for argument's sake here, I've seen me consuming dieting over 8,000 calories on a Saturday on leg day just for recovery. And that's that's not, tr that's truth. You know what I mean? I can post meals that I've eaten on a leg day because your body is so, so depleted. Like my protein shake literally goes down the minute I come off the leg curl because I need it. And if I go an hour after eating, or sorry, without eating, I will take, I will hit, my sugars will drop. I'll be low blood sugar for at least an hour. So I have to come home. And my my drive from legs after, like like I say, four scoops of protein and 150 grams of Vitargo is 25 minutes. As soon as I get in the door, I'm eating again. I'm eating a solid meal. So as you can see, that's my body needing that. If I omit that meal and I have done in the past and ran out the door, I will end up going hypo. And have my blood sugars drop within a couple of hours of me being there because your body needs food. So I couldn't even think of, of fasting an hour, three or four hours after that because I would end up in the hospital. Do you know what I mean? Needing, needing sugars pumped into me. So for me, you're just putting yourself, in my opinion, in an unnecessary position in order to lose weight. Do you know what I mean? I think the last few years, the problem has been everybody has fashionably took in this diet and that diet and this thing and that thing in order to make things sound better, in order to make things sound, you know, easier. And here's the way it is. There is no easy when it comes to getting ready for a show or losing weight. It never will be. The fact is you have to put in the work. The fact is you have to be consistent. The fact is you have to set measurable goals. The fact is you have to plan. They don't, they don't change. And people saying that you can do this and you can eat what you want and you can do all this here. It's a load of shit. You're doing it in order to offset something that never will be easy. And for me, you know, training thousands of people over the years, everybody gets the best results with balance, with a structure and with balance, with consistency and with a better work ethic. That's where people get results in every way. Absolutely. I'm going to give you a rest and I'll take the next one. RN Nana has asked, am I just too old? I'm 47. Is it too late to get in shape and develop good habits? Now, um, RN, I don't know what your, your actual first name is, but I'm guessing you might be quite new around here because this is our demographic is 40 year old women, 50 year old women, 60s. We even have kick ass women in their 70s. This is our demographic. This is who we are working with, and this is who we are experts in working with and training. You know, the thing is, 
we do see that that age is just a number when it comes to, to, be, to being around here. This is who we attract in our in our programs and where we get results. Like, do go to Kim's Instagram at the Sculpted Vegan if you are new and you haven't seen any of our amazing results. You can scroll through her Instagram and you will go through and you will see our winners in our challenges, all different shapes, sizes, ages. Um, our last challenge again, I think, with somebody who's sixty three. The challenge before with somebody who's seventy one. Like it is. Just a number, and it's an only only an excuse if you get it in the way. Let it get in the way, and again, like, what's the other alternative? Just to do nothing, <laughs> you know what I mean? When people throw things like that, I, again, it could be an injury, it could be, you know, uh, an illness. Like everybody has stuff, but like, what is what is the other alternative? Just just to do nothing and get less fit, less strong, fatter. You know, what is the other alternative with it? Mark, in your experience of um, training women, again, of all ages, like, do you, in your opinion, see age as a way of no. getting in the way of progress? Here, I train, some of the women that I train are 40s and 50s, and they train harder than some of the 20-year-old men. Do you know what I mean? And that wow. is the God's honest truth. I've said 100 times in my gym, and I've said this to yourself, I've said this to Kim, but if I was to pick 20 of my hardest training clients, there's no men in that. And that's not because I don't train a lot of men. It's just because they just don't train harder than a lot of the women. Um, just a point there to note, uh, this year, last year, so since COVID, a lot of the bodybuilding shows, the biggest and most impressive classes to note have been all the senior classes in men and women, right? So this is women in their 40s, 50s. This is men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s getting on bodybuilding stages, getting into condition, building muscle, and actually stealing the show. Like I'm talking about the classes this year, especially in the master's divisions, and both the male and the female has been better than the smaller classes. And for me, the reason of this is simple. They have a better work ethic and they've been training for that long. They have more muscle maturity. And what I've seen in physiques in their 40s, 50s and 60s actually take on a better look, believe it or not, than the younger ones. There's a guy in our gym, he's 64 years of age and he looks like he's 30 or 40. And that is the God's honest truth. There's a girl I'm prepping at the minute for the master's bikini. She's 51 and she could pass easily on a night out for a 30 year old lick. These, they, you know, them people there, they're not in, well, they are probably, you know, there's something grand about them in the sense of the work ethic, but anybody can do that. It's just a matter of having the discipline and setting yourself a goal and focusing on it. And like I say, these people, the, the two that I'm talking about, male and female, one of 51, one of 63, they're in as good a shape, if not better, than 95% of the people in my gym. So, you know, for me, age definitely is just a number like like laura said we can all make excuses we can turn around and go all of a sore arm all of a sore shoulder all of a that surgery all of a that surgery trust me i can talk about this till we are blue in the face but i'm still going and the one thing i will say is in my 50s and my 60s and my 70s whatever age god spares me to i will still be training as hard as i can and i'll still be keeping myself in decent shape there's no excuse and i'll not be sitting going in my 50s how come 50 now can't do as much as i can get on with it shut up and get on with it <laughs> I love um the member who had asked it's on. She's like, okay, so to know I'm not too old. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. <definitely. laughs> you know by now. So um next question. Um Emer Em Emar Perez, you've asked, is this program only for vegans or can a meat eater also benefit? So honestly, while our company is the sculpted vegan, our ethos is that we are a vegan company. Actually, only 20% of our met, our customers are actually vegan. Like that is the thing of our programs, of our communities, the way that we manage them. You know, we bridge that gap between being able to learn how to eat a high protein, vegan bodybuilding diet and achieve all your goals as a vegan. But we make it a safe, a safe space for all camps. <laughs> Everybody's welcome to ask your questions just as long as each, each camp kind of respects each other in that. Now, with this, we have in our new program, so our four-week shred uh, body challenge, which is going to be releasing on Monday. Monday? No, Friday. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be releasing on Friday. You know, we, as Marcus said, sort of with the thing of excuses, like there's so many excuses anybody can come up with. With this program, we have literally fought we haven't even thought, we've just listened to all of our members' excuses over the past years. You know, literally written a list of every excuse that people um, can have, you know, whether it's valid or, or not, just them letting themselves off the hook, but even just barriers of what's held them back from succeeding um, in any of our, our past challenges or past programs and actually finishing them. So within this, we've got like our 
our training program for like knee injuries where there's no squats or lunges. And we've got a gazillion coaching calls, five a week, one with me, one with Mark, one with Kim, one with Dr. Rachel, one with Coach V, and we'll have our live Q&As. And then we also have four different meal plans because we know and understand that the food and the meal prep, prep can be a hard thing to do. So we've got our vegan program, our meal plan, we've got soy free, we've got gluten free, and we also have a non-vegan plan. Now, this is not a carnivore plan, but quite a lot of people have assumed um, in the way we're not listing um, meat or actual protein sources, but we have the measurements like 30 grams lean protein, um, 20 grams lean protein, 40 grams lean protein. We've got the details of that and um, just to really, really facilitate it because um, everybody being um, welcome in our groups and achieving their goals, because that is the most important thing. That's why we're here. We want to help you get all your health and fitness goals. So absolutely Everybody is welcome in all of our communities and all of our groups here. Uh, let's head back to a question here. Um, <laughs> okay, Mark, let's see. What am I going to hit you with? Right. Trying to get a, a juicy one. A good a one. Juicy one. I like it. <laughs> a good juicy one. Um, Maeve Lagan has be said, best way to set goals. John, not that set goals. <laughs> yeah, but then said, how how do you pick how do you pick the numbers? So I'm not actually quite sure what she means with that. Well, say say just for argument's sake, we go back to the show thing that I was saying. It's the only thing that'll motivate me get in shape. So what I sort of do, like I was touched on a wee minute ago, is I pick a show, one that sort of has any merit. So for me, once I've won something, the problem is it gets anticlimactic to go back and win it again. So I pick something that sort of something that basically isn't going to be easy done. It's as simple as that. When you win the Britons, you go to the Europe's. When you're in the Europe's, you go to the Worlds. When you go to the Worlds, you go to the Universe. So you just keep up and up and up. And so you need to pick something for me that you know isn't going to be easy, that you know is going to make you work. Because if you feel it's going to be easy, then you're going to rest in your laurels. So for me, the first thing I do is I set something that in reality I shouldn't be able to win. That's always the way. I like being the underdog. I like being the person. That nobody has a chance. He's not going to win. He's not going to do that. So that's the first thing. So for me, I said something that people are going, seriously, you're going to do that. You're like, yep, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to fucking win that. That's what I'm going to do. So I set a goal that's really up there. And then basically I give myself the time I need. So we'll say for argument's sake, it's came to the end of my off season. I've sort of looked at what it is. Then I put the time frame in. And the time frame is usually conducive to how many weeks will it take me to get from where I am now at the end of my off season to where I need to be on the stage. So that's being absolutely realistic with all the shit hanging on your body. Do you know what I mean? So in reality, all the stuff you don't want there anymore. So for me, I always put it up a bit. So people go, oh, a couple of stone off you and you'll be ready. I always aim for maybe another 10 or 12 pound on top of that. That there gives you the time frame. So say we fix that we need 20 weeks to get ready, then we put the 20 weeks in. So that's where the time comes. You know, I'm not one of these guys who does a 12 week diet just because somebody said it's a 12 week diet. I have to prep properly. I have to know what it's going to be. And then what I do is week to week, I basically check in with myself or one of my, one of the guys that's helped me out. And that's where realism comes in. Like we are brutally honest to the point where if you hadn't got thick skin, you'd probably walk out and jump off a bridge. It is bad. And to be honest with you, the worst person in my camp that's brutally honest is actually my own wife who at this stage will tell you exactly what you need to know when you need to know it on a weekly basis. Do you know what I mean? But for me, that sort of accountability I need in order to keep me. I work well with that. I don't work well with people blowing smoke up my ass. I don't work well with people telling me how amazing they am. I work well with critical, constructive criticism. So for me, it's 20 weeks of literally critical, constructive criticism, which changes every week based on that goal. So that massive goal stays at the head. I'm literally, you know, thinking about that daily, weekly, monthly as it comes in, and then I just switch things up as I need to, and voila, follow the plan, keep it simple, and by the date that you're in, you're there. But for me, the massive thing you have to do is make that goal so friggin' big that you know you have to turn over every stone in order to achieve it. That's the way I would work it. That's the way I've always done it. I'm not going to go in to the show or diet for a wedding or lose a few pounds. I'm not saying these aren't all good goals. I'm just saying this is what motivates me. Um, I need something that basically absolutely scares the shit out of you in order for me to get my arson gear, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that that is one of the reasons that we, we um, in our challenges, have 
prize money because <laughs> we are wanting to. Not a good way. Get everybody. I, mean, I always, I always think about all of our members and our challenges. You know, um, I've competed for like plastic trophies. <laughs> I think I once got um, a, a tar of tins of tuna. Tuna. I, I don't know what That's was. New. So, That's definitely uh, new. Warning about that. <laughs> it was like a first place prize. It was a, a booby prize in that competition. But that is one of the things that we do and why we have prize money in our challenges to give you guys the motivation to give everybody something bigger than them, to really fuel that why, to help you drive forwards to get it. Now, I'm just going to tie this into a question that um, Deborah Lee has asked. Um, she has asked, I may be going on a trip to Netherlands on the 20th for two weeks. I really want to go and do this new challenge. Do you think it's possible to do both? So the answer is absolutely yes. This new four-week shredded body challenge we are running it um, really quite differently from what we've ever done before. Um, normally in our other challenges, we've had prize money at the end. So it's been prize money for the biggest transformation of the before at the start of the challenge and then the after. So if it's been a four week, eight week, 12 weeks, we've got a six month challenge ending um, this weekend. So it's the prize for the end of that. With the four week shredded body, we are trying to set you up for success and quick wins. So we are giving away... Um, $10,000 each week for the biggest transformation within that week. So you have a chance to win in week one, two, three, four, as well as overall before and after. You could enter all five times. You could enter once. You could enter in week one, then on week three. It is entirely up to you, but that doesn't mean, Deborah Lee, that you could go away on your holiday and then come back to the challenge after. It is really, really different what we're trying to do Um with this challenge and it is just to get everybody going and um, to the yeah. end of it because no matter kind of how much support we've had and you know again even you know this challenge it's ending there's gonna be a hundred thousand dollars for the first place winner but you know you get that motivation at the start but motivation is very fleeting it's not reliable after a while it disappears so we're trying to really break it down to even just to get do week one you, you made it to the week, end of week one, brilliant. Can you get to the end of week two? You got to there, awesome. We're trying to really just get those little quick wins for you. And that is the thing sometimes, you know, you can have the big lofty long-term physique goals, but sometimes something just like a four-week goal, four weeks of just getting stuck in, doing the hard thing can just be like a massive kick up the butt and a massive just pat on the back and proof to yourself that you can do hard things. You absolutely, absolutely can. And um, so, yes, me and Mark, we're getting getting geared up to do some judging, both in EBM and also before we tread a body too. Hard so. judging at that. There's some fantastic transformations that we expect. But as Laura said, you know, it's four weeks. And if you split it up into weeks, do you know what I mean? There's an opportunity to win 10,000 plus pull yourself into shape week on week. So for me, if that's not a big enough reason in order to get into shape and give you sort of kick up the ass to do it now, you know, you have to kind of look at it and go, well, when is when is right? When is the right time? You know what I mean? There is really always a reason for not to do it. There always is going to be, but it's about finding out the main reason why you're going to do it. And, you know, for most people going to a gym, taking that first step, a lot of the time can feel daunting because they feel they're so, so far away from where they want to be. But for me, it's about putting the one step in front of the other and starting because the sooner you start, the sooner you get there. The more you put it off, the longer it's going to take. And, you know, a lot of people I've seen training, getting out of it and coming back in, they'd say two years later, the regret's there. And a lot of them will go, oh, imagine if I had kept that. And you're kind of going, yeah, but you didn't. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, that is the issue so many people encounter. And one of the things I try to do in the gym, and even with a lot of my clients, is keep them at it, you know, because I know that they're all going to regret stopping it at some stage. They all do. They all come back and say the same thing. So it's trying to give them that sort of info before they stop just to keep them you know at it so this is a perfect reason for anybody sitting on the fence or anybody skeptical or anybody you know that's just that but worried um about stepping and foot you know there's four good weeks hard weeks um for me anybody not saying anybody but anybody with the right work ethic can do the four weeks get themselves a massive kick start and get themselves into fantastic shape starting off yeah, absolutely. Um, Tracy Middleton, I feel like Mark's nearly kind of answered your question in this one. Tracy had asked, if breaking up a 12-month or more goal into smaller goals is okay, and um, what increments would you recommend for a complete novice? Again, sm just those small chunks, like the likes of four weeks. You know, four weeks is really, it's really a month. You know, it's really like a month of having it. Breaking it down to those small chunks, and then even when you have the pl a plan, which breaks things down even to like a week. I know 
when I did, you know, I did a, a 12 week prep for my photo shoot because that's what I needed to do. But I really was like, right, day one. <laughs> okay, so many days left, you know, then into the weeks and into, um, you know, how many days I had, how many weeks I had. I'll start like big with my goals from start to finish. And then I just make it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller just so I can tick off each day at a time and um, each week at a time towards my goal because it can just be that real feeling of of overwhelm when something is so far away. And I think people can get really stuck in that end bit. But when we really, really bring it back, you know, the thing we always cover in bodybuilding is it is really the basics which take you forward. You know, it yeah, isn't absolutely. nothing fancy, there's nothing rocket science. It's just getting really started with the basics and bodybuilding to start moving everybody towards their goals. Yeah, the problem now is there's so much misinformation and shitty information and too much, you know, sugar coating on things nowadays. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, like we said, like we said a few minutes ago, it boils down to hard work. It boils down, like I said, to set a goal, set a plan, and then literally work your ass off in order to achieve that goal. And the thing about it is, the better shape you want to get into, the more muscle you want to build, the harder it gets because the more work you have to put in. Do you know what I mean? But that's the, that's the beauty of it. You know, I've always said that you're consistently striving for better. You're consistently striving, you know, to get yourself, you know, bigger muscle or look better or leaner and even healthier and fitter. Do you know what I mean? And so you're doing something that in reality is going to help your life for all positive reasons. You know, there's not one sort of negative uh, impact reason for training with weights, doing cardio, and eating properly you know there's not one person doctor anything can say that ain't good for you so you're doing positive steps for life you're doing positive steps for health fitness and everything good so you know the bottom line to it is just do the small stuff you know a lot of people sometimes overcomplicate things but it's the simple things that make the massive difference you know and that's just showing up every day being realistic to yourself and just getting on with it, regardless of the situation you know yeah now staying on the line of sort of like a, a complete no, novice or somebody just again, you know, feeling potentially overwhelmed of like how much they feel they have to change in their life to go towards their health and fitness goals. I know you've told me a story before about you had a, a client who was drinking like quite a lot of like Coca-Cola. Was it like yeah. eight, eight cans a day or whatever? How did, how did you help her start to cut yeah, that Basically, down? this woman came to me and her diet was about three or four, you know, takeaways a day, about eight to ten tons of Coke. And literally sitting in the house and i remember the first time i met her and like she didn't want to go out she didn't want to go to a gym because she was self-conscious and i'm going to tell you the god's honest truth it was walking around the football field with her started her off so i went up we walked around a football field she maybe only got half a lap to start you know what i mean and then she maybe done one and then she's done two so it was just basically stage and stage and it wasn't because she she genuinely couldn't walk that far because of how much weight she put on we dropped her coke down from 12 to four or six do you know what i mean and we dropped the, the fast foods, believe it or not, down to one a day. So we didn't cut them out completely. We were just trying to make marketable steps that she could stick to. Because me turning around and going, right, I need you in the gym training five days a week, doing two hours of cardio, hot cardio, fucking for 20 minutes every after every weight session, no coke, green veg, and protein only. She wasn't going to stick to that. Her body was just going to shut down like that, and you were going to be left. She was going to be straight back on. And the thing about it is she had that low self-confidence as it was. She, she, We knew, and I knew, that this was one thing that she couldn't feel. You know, it was one of them things that we needed to make it, you know, doable for her so that she couldn't feel it. Because the more she got on to it and the more confident she grew, the better she gets. So long story short, she ended up making it into the gym. She ended up training in the gym. She ended up doing weights in the gym. She now does boxing regularly, a bit of weight training. She's probably lost the guts in her weight about, I would say, 140 pounds or something like that there over a period of years. Um, married now... Uh, with a fella that I know, I'm basically loving life. Do you know what I mean? Now, she's still a wee bit of weight left on her, but she's content from where she came from. But you wouldn't even recognize the same girl in terms of confidence and everything else. So it's like anything. You just set small goals, make them achievable, set it into your lifestyle, and that's a major thing. I think there, one thing I was going to say, an example of myself, uh, whenever I had my kids, everybody thought that my bodybuilding career was gone, it was done, it was over because you had one kid and then, for some strange reason, reason, Lee kept firing kids out on a fucking daily basis. You know what I mean? How did that happen? So uh, at the end of the day, I had to take ownership of these wow. things that were running around. But everybody sort of ripped me off for every show because you now had three or four kids. And, you know, looking back at my bodybuilding career, that was when I got better. You know what I mean? So 
it never it never impacted me. It never hard. Kemba got a TV before that. Yeah. Somebody else got that in the back. So, I, but, it. <laughs> I still to this day take nothing to do with it. I don't think I was there in the making of it, you know what I mean? Um, but like I said, you know, he ended up being able to do more, put things in perspective. I was still able to train. I was still able to do cardio. I was still able to stick to diet. And voila, 10 or 12 titles since these wee things appeared in my life. And we're still going strong. So it's about taking your life and working out where it fits in and what fits in. And again, that's back down to planning and it's down to setting goals. Do you know what I mean? Um, and not letting your other half get what she wants all the time, you know? And, and, um, it's all right. You let her get what she wanted too much. <laughs> so like... I wasn't there, so I don't know. You know I mean? Like I said, she gave birth. There's no evidence to suggest I'm anyway in that way. I'll take credit now because they've turned out well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but at the end like, of the day, yeah. you know, <laughs> You know, it happens for whatever reason, it happens, and uh, we still get on with it. We didn't have to quit bodybuilding, we didn't have to quit going to the gym, we didn't have to quit doing everything. And to this day, I still do what I'm doing, I still train, I still do cardio, I still eat properly, and we're still planning on doing a show again. So, if I can fit it into my life around five kids, a gym, you know, etc., etc., anybody can, anybody can, absolutely. And um, let me see, uh, so many questions, guys. These are amazing, absolutely loving this live tonight. Angela Perini has asked, Mark, how often should you increase the weight to build muscle? Say that again, because I was too busy reading Kim's next one. <laughs> Ernest, dig at you. <laughs> trying to you. How often should you increase the weight to build muscle? Just whenever you're ready to. At the end of the day, the way I always work it is I work in an 8 to 12 rep. So, you know, say I'm in the gym and I'm doing 8 reps, I'll push that up to 12. Once I get it to the 12th rep, then I'll increase the weight. Some weeks it goes up very easy. There's there's weeks there that I go on to the leg press and I'll maybe stick at 6 or 7. The following week I'll hit 10 or 12. Then I'll increase the weight. The one thing I will say and the biggest mistake I see people making is they increase the weight in too many increments, you know. In our gym, it's okay to lift like, you know, five pounds, 10 pounds, things like that there that make the weight smaller. I, I see guys going over to 45 pound plates and stuff like that. It's far too much, you know, take stick off smaller increments and make sure you're getting the reps right. But if you're if you're doing everything right, if you're training right, you're uh, doing you're getting adequate nutrition, you're getting adequate recovery, there's no reason why people can't progress weights every week or every couple of weeks, do you know what I mean? Just make sure that you're progressing the weights within good form, that you're still using the same range of motion, and basically that you're doing nothing outside the norm. Because a lot of people sometimes when they're progressing, their range of motion starts shortening, their form goes out the window. And in reality, it's not a fair sort of, you know, stand and, you know, to say, well, I was lifting 60 pounds last week, I'm now lifting 100, but you're only going to a certain depth in the squat. So with them variables being equal and food and everything and recovery being good, there's no reason why you can't put on small increments of weight every couple of weeks you know yeah absolutely and the thing is with all our, our all of our programs we what we have in recent years we have a gym program a home gym program which is with barbells and dumbbells and then we have minimal equipment home program which is a mixture of tends to be resistance bands body weight exercises and just the likes of a pull a pull up bar and you can go to failure in all of those programs it's always just trying to move the most load that you can whether that is your body because again our bodies can weigh pretty much more than plenty of barbells and dumbbells that are in the gym or whether it actually is gym equipment there's always always options where you can go to failure with that and push up with more muscle and it is all relative i feel like sometimes people can get hung up sort of in the groups about the exact numbers and they're trying yeah. to chase an exact number but again what is uh, an amount that one person goes to failure on can be different for another. Like it's all relative, and you have to start somewhere. Like I had a big break last year, and um, just my personal life, I barely trained, um, and I got back into consistent training with Mark maybe about oh, four or five months ago now, and I'd lost like a lot of strength. And Mark had to give me a couple of pep talks and just like, you know, it's fine. Like wind your neck in like you can't expect us to start back where I was I kind of felt like I was starting from scratch again you know my weights were a lot lighter than what they've been in the past but they were the heaviest that I could lift at that time and over time you know as I grew stronger the weight well I was able to move more load and bring the weights up so don't get hung up exactly on the numbers just trying to no. just as much and I'm gonna I'm gonna read out what Kim said um Kim has left a, co a comment. It was marked very well and trained Mark for a very long time. 
I remember Lee getting pregnant with Callie, and Callie is Callie four or five now, Mark? He's four now, yeah, he's the baby. He's four, he's the baby. And she was due at the same time as PCA, which was a bodybuilding show, and was the show that Mark and Lee ran. ran. I said to Mark, will you cancel the show? He was horrified, no way. It's only a baby, he said. <laughs> so Lee ran the show and gave it the prizes with Callie strapped her. And that's how the Gettys rule. <laughs> that's it. I think really, Kim will remember the time that she was the Callie as well, and she was in that morning squatting, you know what I mean? So Lee was in the gym. Basically, it was 40 weeks, and uh, she was in the gym in the morning. Kim was at the same time. We were training. Due date was that day, and uh, basically, she was doing the lunges. She was squatting. She had Hestia, who the, the, at that stage was two. She was holding her and her belly with Callie, obviously, inside her while lunging and doing this here. I get a phone call about nine that night, basically, it's Lee saying, listen, no need to, no need to worry. I'm just going to deliver, finish off your clients, do what you're doing, and then come home. And... Uh, Literally, I got home, she was in a bath, got herself sorted, away to the, the hospital, and I would say an hour within going, out pops Cali. So, like I said, you know, when it comes to prepping people and when it comes to gym excuses, I'm probably not the person that sort of takes things lightly. Like, I've seen Lee doing amazing things. She's not a competitor. She just enjoys training. She just gets on with things, you know. Um, I've seen Kim doing the same with massive workloads and things like that there. So, for me... When I say women actually put more effort in than men, I genuinely mean it because they've more to deal with. So for me, when you're when you're around people like that daily, and then you've got other people coming making excuses, I'm not exactly too uh, let's say too forthcoming with 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 sympathy for any of the excuses. Because like I say, to me, if you want something bad enough, you're going to move mountains. If you ever talk to Kim regarding when she when she you know started uh, the Scott the Vegan, you know with the times that she had to work. Uh, plus the kids and things like that. It'll just show you and give you another insight and uh, what you had to do. She wanted it badly. She did it regardless of what was going on. And that's just the bottom line. If you want something badly in life, whether it was a business, you know, financial stability, your body look for the day for, it's work related. You have to put in the work, you have to find the time and you have to make it work within your schedule. It's as simple as yeah. that. Was it Kim saying, if you if you want something, you'll find a way. And if you don't want it, you'll find an excuse. <laughs> 100% couldn't agree more. Absolutely. So Celeste, Celeste Pinkham, you've asked, what are some techniques that have worked for you to help you stay on the meal plan when you're tempted to eat a snack off plan during a shred? So one thing I love about our sculpted vegan programs um, when you're dieting is that you do have permission to eat more if you need to of green cruciferous vegetables. And I had this ex first experience um, where I prepped for my first photo shoot was about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and Kim very kindly got her private chef, Lee, <laughs> to um to prep my meals for me. And it was um all vegan protein, so I had lots of um seitan, um, tempeh, some tofu, um minimal, um, minimal white carbs, and mainly loads and heaps and heaps and heaps of green cruciferous vegetables. And it was the first time I had shredded in like probably about eight years. I'd given up um, bodybuilding about eight, eight years ago at that time. So I actually kind of had the photo shoot thrown on me, like quite, Kim was just like one day, so you're doing a photo shoot, um, starting tomorrow, your prep starts tomorrow, it's in four weeks to do get ready for this photo shoot. So very, very first fast time around and fast time to kind of get my head in the game. And I actually was a bit, bit kind of scared and nervous because now I am 36 now, but I do think back when to, I was in my early 20s and a competitor, like I was an absolute like hot mess. I always have to laugh when people say again about about age being being a limitation. I am I I wish you know I had back then, like the mindset I have now, the discipline, the drive, uh, even just the finances I have now, it would have been the knowledge. Complete, competing a lot easier because it's so expensive and the knowledge, you know, I was just a complete mess back then. So I was a wee bit, a wee bit nervous if I was going to be able to like achieve this goal. But, you know, kind of week, one week passed, two weeks passed. I really got into like week three of this prep. And I was just waiting to like feel like that dying feeling, you know, when you're like the absolute depths of, of prep and you're so, so such an extreme deficit. And it just never came. And I just, I turned around to Kim one day and I was like, you really have cracked the secret to dieting, you know, because I just have not felt like any hunger. Like I've been waiting for it to come. 
But anytime I feel hungry, like I'm ready for my next meal. When I did maybe get hungrier in those, like that final third into that fourth week, I could just have eaten more green cruciferous vegetables if I wanted to, because very majority of it is fiber, it just passes through your body and you poop it out the other end. So it's not getting converted into calories, which isn't going to get um, stored as body fat. So we use that in all of our programs, but our meal plans are designed to fill you up with that fiber and the high protein diet. And then you do have the option that you can eat in between. Now, again, would I rather have vegan ice cream, chocolate? Yes, of course I would. <laughs> but when I'm on trip, when I'm on prep and on for my shred and for my goal, do you know what? I'll suck it up and have a bit more broccoli and cauliflower in between. So I do do that again, rather than trying to avoid eating, I will eat. It's maybe not what I want to eat, <laughs> but I'll give the green cruciferous veg a go. What about you, Mark? Any I think that the reality when people think they're dieting, it automatically assumes that they're eating less food. And I think that's the big problem from the get go. They think when they're dieting, they're basically starving themselves. Because again, that falls back to what everybody believes a diet is. You know what I mean? They're starving themselves of food. But in reality, if you're doing it right, it's quite the opposite. You know, for me, whenever I put my diet meals in, the amount of food that I'm eating from vegetables, from protein sources, from, you know, I would take in the likes of some carbs, like oats, it all is long acting so that it keeps you fuller for longer. But if you, the trick is, if you stick to them meals timed, you will not be hungry on a diet. That I have never been hungry in a bodybuilding diet. In fact, it's the complete opposite. You're finding sometimes that you have to overgo a wee bit in order to get the meals in because you're not ready for the meal before. Um, so for me, I'm eating six times a day at the minute and I'm not hungry from one meal to the next. It's basically because the foods that you're choosing and the prepping them, if you're eating them on time, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no want to stray, so to speak. And what I find for people being sort of, you know, cheating on their diet, it's not down to the fact that they're hungry. You know what I mean? If you turn around and go, well, take more green veg or take more seitan or take more whatever it is, it has nothing to do with that. It's that they want to eat shit. Do you know what I mean? And nine times out of 10, that's because they feel to prepare. They're missing meals. They haven't, you know, they've ran out of the house for breakfast. And once you start doing that, that inevitably runs into them people getting cravings, sugar cravings, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously, like Laura touched on, you're not craving a big stem of broccoli. You're always going to crave something that you're not allowed. It's just sod's law. So basically, the trick is keep yourself filled. If you stick to the meal plan as subscribed and all the Sculpted Vegan uh, you know, programs, you will not be hungry. Trust me, you will not be hungry. And if you're not hungry, you don't want you don't need a snack, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I've got one juicy question to finish here from Lisa Streetly. Um, just finished my first bikini competition. Ju um, congratulations. Judges feedback is to build legs. How many times a week should I train my legs? And what are the best exercises for hamstrings and any other advice, please? What do you think, Mark? So for me, the amount of times I train legs is once. And this, the, the, the reason for that is my body just doesn't recover anymore from training anymore. You know, I've tried the two times, but the amount of load that I'm shifting and the amount of intensity it is one day is ample for me to build legs. Most of my bikini athletes, women, I would get them to train twice a week. And basically we split legs up into two sort of uh, leg workouts. We'll do a quad dominant one where we'll touch on a bit of hamstrings and glutes. And then we'll do like a hamstring glute dominant one where we'll touch on a bit of quads at the end. The main factor for any leg growth is full range of motion and load. For me, if you do, if you take the legs through a full range of motion, you're hitting every muscle in the lower body. So, for example, if you're squatting, your leg pressing, your hack squatting, and you're going right to the depths, the workout's going to be the exercise are going to be a lot harder. But the reward is you're building everything. So you're building your glutes, you're building your hams, you're building your quads. And for me, that is the fundamental concept when it comes to building legs. You know what I mean? In terms of exercises. You know the big compounds are the ones to do so some form of squat hack squat leg press all fantastic in order to build that uh, lunges are a good one just to put the icing in the cake and a few other things what what i like when i'm training legs I'm, I'm a stickler for a thing called a flow i like a flow in a workout so we normally start with leg extensions to sort of get everything moving get the knees lubricated then we'll go on to two compounds then we'll have a lunge and then we'll have a hamstring exercise at the end so that's the way i would work it on the flip side, then for the, the hamstring one, we'll warm up the hamstrings. Maybe do a bit of stiff leg deadlifts after leg curls, a bit of Bulgarians, some glute bridges, and then we'll finish off with a wee bit of quads. But at the same time, we're still trying to keep the focus on the glute. So if you go with two days a week and you structure the workouts properly with good compounds, you keep the range of motion full at all times, and you go to absolute failure where you leave your soul on the floor after it, 
then you'll definitely grow a set of legs. If you're able to train legs five times a week, then you ain't doing them right. And if you love training legs, you ain't doing them right. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the one thing I say to people. Whenever you train legs, do you like it or hate it? They always say like it. When they come in and train with me, they don't like it anymore. I know. Like oh, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have my most dreaded day on a Friday now. <laughs> And I thought I think yours changes from Tuesday to Friday. To I know what I do to say, so I, I thought I was telling you that, and you, I thought it was just my prep because you were like, "Oh no, it's it's just it's the end of the week and you're dieting, and now I'm off prep." I'm like, "No, it is you. You're, you're the problem, Mark, not me." I am the problem. I love being the problem. I will continue to be the problem. Don't you worry about that. Absolutely. So, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this live tonight with Mark. Like Mark, thank you so much. Like I, I just love myself just sitting back and learning from you of everything again what mark doesn't know about bodybuilding is not worth knowing and we just wanted to give you a little bit of a taster here and access and um experience you know the amount of knowledge that mark just spits out of you in and such a you will have at your disposal mm, absolutely so for a shadow body challenge is going to be opening on friday in that you're going to have weekly live q a's with myself and mark you're going to have a zoom call with mark again no holds barred and you're going to get um training videos as well as little kind of motivational videos we like to, to to throw into the group too mark is going to be sharing all of his best tips secrets methods of how to both shred fat fast but also how to build a muscle fast Absolutely. You know, and that is going to be the thing, you know, we're going to be together for four weeks. And our goal is just to give you the greatest, most epic transformation that we can give you within the whole four weeks. But even just week to week, we're going to put the work in. But that's why we're going to be here holding your hand the whole way through it. And um, Mark and I also are going to be doing within onboarding week and um, a tutorial of, of how to train the failure without a spotter. And that's going to be really, really good, too. So. Mark's coming for you, taking every single excuse away, and he's going to be just I'm giving you everything. I'm loving it. And just, you know, just before we finish, one thing I've noticed, especially in the EBM, the group, the group, uh, what we've had, the platinum calls, different things, you know, the feedback has been massively amazing from everybody. And I think everybody would say that what they've got out of it has been massively important and, you know, and good for what they've needed to do. You know, you can see the support in the groups and things like that there. So it is, as Laura said, I hold in your hand right the way through everything. Everything you need, all your fears, your worries, everything will be addressed. Any questions, queries will be put up. And as Laura said, I am an open book. I will answer everything. And sometimes in these platinum calls, they've went completely different directions from all things training. But like I say, I don't mind. It is a bit of fun. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. The bottom line is we can have a bit of fun taking care of everything and actually do it in style so that you guys get the best out of it and have the absolute massive, massive, brilliant transformations at the end of the four weeks. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mark. So I Thank will you catch much. you in this challenge, the rest of the group. group I'll be um, the rest of the group. The rest of the week, I'll be supporting Kim. But, you know, both myself and Mark, we hope we will see as many of these as possible. Yep. And for each other body. I think I'm excited, Mark, because we've had, obviously, EBM has been a 24-week challenge. Yeah. I'm like, wow, to those, people, those members are getting through. Massive I'm excited yeah. about Excited about a four-week challenge. It's a nice, fast. It'll be nice, short, snappy, and it'll be good to kickstart everything. So it'll be a different set of values, it'll be a different set of goals too, and it'll obviously contain a different set of problems for me and you to work out and take care uh, of, which is always good and always exciting, you know? Absolutely. So, guys, um, have a great week. We'll hopefully see you very, very soon um, in Four Weeks Better Body for joining us. And if not, just have an amazing week again, soaking up this challenge with the amazing teachings of Kim. Again, I've just been really loving listening to Kim every day, twice a day. <laughs> I listen to her all day, but I never get sick of her. Just, just like Mark, <laughs> I never get That's enough it. of being previous. Um, but Mark, thank you so much for your time tonight. I really appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I will see you soon. Um, I'll see you on Friday in the gym. Yeah, well, day for yeah. your favorite day. Oh, no. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. See you soon. Thank you.